Thank you for your visit uh, in Cognac, uh, in the heart of uh, the area of the Grand Champagne, here at uh, Chateau de Fompineau. This is the best of the best. Before the 18th century, exported French wine often spoiled during long journeys due to the transportation conditions of that time. To solve this problem, people tried double distillation to increase the alcohol content during transportation. After arrival, it would be diluted to its original form. The double distilled white wine was the early brandy. The famous brandy called Cognac is named for a small town of southwest France. The 100,000 hectares around it are most suitable for grapes, not only because of its weather, but also its soil. The French government stipulated that the brandy could be called Cognac only if it was made from the grapes produced from the Cognac area. So the story of uh, Cognac Frappin starts here in the middle of uh, Grand Champagne, the first crew of Cognac area. The characteristic of uh, Grand Champagne is the soil and subsoil. Subsoil is a crumbly chalk and crumbly chalk is very important for the water supply. Around Cognac, the planting area was divided into six different sections according to the qualities of the grapes produced. The best section is in the center of the planting area, Grand Champagne. The Frappin family selected 320 hectares and built the largest and best vineyard in that area. About vine growing, we use different techniques. There is two groups of techniques. The first group, it's the tradition. We try to continue the tradition if it's good for the quality. For example, before replanting a new vine, we wait minimum for seven years to clean the soil. Uh, so it's traditional way. Uh, second group of techniques is uh, the new knowledge. Uh, for example, uh, every year we analyze the leaves, we analyze the soil to decide the feeding, etc. etc. So it's two kinds of technique between tradition and new knowledge. The Frappin estates are an example of what is known as reasonable agriculture. Every year, they restore the natural elements of the soil using pruned branches and distillation residue. The soil rests for a minimum of seven years before being replanted with vines. In this way, the insects that feed off the vine roots are totally eliminated. So in Frappin vineyard, we have grass in the middle of the row like this. And we have grass, and one of the reasons that we have grass is because uh, the good mites, so eat the bad one, and after eat the neutral, and after neutral, they eat some pollen. It's the reason why we have grass in the middle of the row. And it's a natural grass because we want to have some flower all summertime, because our challenge is to have good one, to control bad one, but it's also to keep the good one in our vineyard. The harvest takes place during the month of October. As soon as they are picked, the grapes are gently pressed in traditional presses. The grape juice is left to ferment for five to seven days. The resulting white wine is then distilled. All distillation must be finished by March 31st. In Frappin Vineyard, to make a good wine. At first, during the harvest, we are going very quickly to prevent the oxidation. Second, we clean everything during the harvest uh, against bacteria. And in third, probably the most, most important element is the characteristic of the wine. The wine is an acid wine because we need acidity to keep the wine before the distillation without sulfur. It's the reason why Uni Blanc represents near 100% in cognac area is a variety because this var we pick grape of this variety in general in the beginning of October before the end of the maturation to have a small acidity to keep the wine.
The alembic used to make cognac is called a charité pot, which were all made of red bronze. Its basic design has remained the same over the past 500 years. The charité pot is still composed of a boiler and a still head in the shape of an olive or an onion. The boiler sits over a naked flame. A pipe called the swan's neck joins the still head and the cooling system. In the cooling system, the pipe changes into a coil that sits in the cold water. This is where the alcoholic vapors condense. Distillation takes place in two stages and lasts approximately 24 hours. After the second distillation, the French call the liquor eau de vie. However, years of aging are still needed until the spicy new liquor can be called cognac. You have a head of distillation. We put away 25 liters. We blend it with the wine to distill it again because it's too strong, a more volatile element. So we keep only the earth to make the distillation. Uh, it's around 70, 71, maximum 72.4. And uh, we put it in barrel cask from Limousin uh, for aging. And what's happened when, when we put uh, the eau de vie in cask, in barrel, every year we have between 2 and 3% go on evaporation. This is the angel share. And uh, if you have no evaporation, you have no aging. The eau de vie generated by double distillation cannot be called cognac. It has to go through the aging process in oak casks for at least two years, and sometimes up to more than 50 years. The wonderful changes of cognac all happen in oak casks. Through the continuous contact and exchange with the air of the cellar and the oak casks, cognac receives the color of the oak wood and its strong fragrance. Some of the characteristics of the oak wood transfer to cognac and give cognac its unique ancient taste. The winemaker of cognac is the key for making cognac. During the whole aging process, winemakers observe the changes of the eau de vie to decide what time is best for changing casks. Because cognac is not sold according to its age, the job of winemakers is to skillfully mix cognac from different years and different areas to get uniform, marketable products. We use the alcometer yeah, uh, to see the degrees of the cognac because uh, when you have a very cold weather, uh, the cognac concentrates. And when you have a very hot weather, uh, uh, you have a, a dilatation. I don't know if, if it's uh, in English uh, the word, but. Uh, uh, when you have cold weather. So to know the real degrees of uh, cognac, we have to, to see uh, with a temperature, uh, the alcometer with a temperature, to have uh, um, the real degrees of cognac. For example, here you have 36 at 8 degrees, so temperature. So it means it's at 49% alcohol, 40.9% alcohol. 1888 is a very special year for the Frappin family winemaking history. In 1888, with the vineyard successfully rejuvenated, Pierre Frappin prepared his participation at the Universal Exhibition, for which Gustave Eiffel had just completed his famous tower. Gustave Eiffel designed a wine storehouse of himself. Actually, some of the Frappin family cognacs are even older than 1888. They have aged for so many generations and are a testament to the mastery of the late and great Monsieur Pierre Frappin. Sometimes we make a limited edition like this decanter. This is very high quality product. And we have only uh, 1,888 bottles. This is very old cognac, aged more than 60 years in, in cask. You have uh, a lot of aromas. Mm, very complex. It's a concentration of fruit. You have a, a lot of uh, apricot aromas, orange aromas, very um, exotic wood. Uh, it's very, very complex product, and still 
aromas like old wine also. This frappine develops a sumptuous and profound sensuality. Its aromatic palate is astonishingly complex. Dried fruits, nuts, raisins, prunes, candied oranges, and towering waves of torrified cacao, tonka beans, and coffee. The heart of its character is a sublime harmony of vineyard flowers, a flash of scents of the lime tree, pepper, soft spices, white honey, vanilla, leather, and tropical woods. The Frappine family has been established in southwest France since 1270, initially as a family of grape growers. They then became distillers and have continued this tradition for 20 generations, over 700 years. Nice to see you here. <clears throat> here you have the map and uh, you will see others uh, of all the different area of cognac. And here you have uh, the old categories that uh, we have been selling for 150 years. Pierre Frappin, uh, another one, a long, long time ago, the king of France was uh, Louis XIV, and uh, he was uh, a particular to the king, and uh, so he was also his doctor. So he was awarded the coat of arms we are exporting to China. The Frappine family has passed down their unique distilling processes and incomparable vineyard over centuries. All the processes, from the grape planting, through harvesting, pressing, fermenting, distilling, to the storing, still use the traditional methods created hundreds of years ago. The red bronze alembic is from Charette, and the oak casts are from Limousine. You can appreciate their craftsmanship when you smell one of their cognacs. When you hold the glass of cognac in front of you and shake it toward your face, you can smell the aromas of potpourri, fruits, and spices, which approach you step by step, inspiring your passion and inebriating you with the joy from Frappin. Thank you for coming to Chateau de Frompineau. We are always happy to have friends coming and to visit us and especially if they come from far, far away. Thank you.